Well, the drama continues at the Francophone Summit in Armenia. Mikhail Jean is not giving up. The Canadian government is no longer supporting her. The Quebec government has withdrawn its support. Nevertheless, Mikhail Jean refuses to abandon her bid to be re-elected as head of La Francophonie. The international organization is meeting this week in Armenia, and all observers now expect Rwanda's foreign minister will be chosen as the Francophonie's next secretary general. But Canada's former governor general says she won't throw in the towel until a proper debate is had about her candidacy. To look at it all, I am joined now by Fen Hampson. He is the director of the Global Security and Politics Program at the Centre of International Governance Innovation, and he joins us from Waterloo, Ontario. Fen Hampson, thanks for taking the time. Good to be with you, Martin. So what do you make of this? I, I want to put to you a quote. Uh, through her spokesperson, uh, Madame Jean is saying uh, that her spokesperson, his, his, um, he's basically saying that he was surprised that the Canadian government and the Quebec government were so quick to announce that they were withdrawing their support. He says, quote, a consensus implies a debate that is held according to standards. And uh, with the summit only beginning, no doubt that discussion will take place among the heads of state behind closed doors. So he's seeming to suggest that this is untoward, that governments shouldn't have abandoned her. What do you make of it all? Well, what I make of it, Martin, is that this is a huge diplomatic embarrassment. It's an embarrassment for Canada because uh, this is a Canadian who's held this position. Uh, I think it's an embarrassment, uh, quite frankly, uh, for the um, Secretary General of La Francophonie, uh, Michael Jean. Uh, normally, these, these kinds of uh, contests, if you want to put it uh, that way, um, uh, are worked out quietly, uh, behind closed doors. Uh, if uh, if uh, somebody's uh, uh, candidacy is under question, uh, it's worked out quietly so they can step aside gracefully. Uh, certainly the long-standing tradition of La Francophonie is that you don't have uh, votes on the position. It is done by consensus. It's worked out uh, quietly uh, beforehand. Uh, uh, if, if somebody looks like they're the front runner, then the other candidates will withdraw. And I think, uh, you know, it's fair to say that um, the Secretary General uh, has probably gone rogue on this one. Well, could it also be, I mean, here's, because we're also wrestling with this thing. I mean, we saw that Mikhail Jean was, was chosen by acclamation last time around in 2014. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. Uh, as you That's say, right. it's consensus. And the other candidates with... Yeah, and the other candidates uh, uh, withdrew, right. withdrew when they saw they didn't have enough support. Could it be uh, that the, she just feels that her, her home government and the Quebec government uh, were too quick to pull the rug? Uh, that we, they could have maybe gotten there and waited the mandatory day or two and then announced in a more dignified way? Could it that be it? Well, I think it, it, it became pretty clear that uh, when uh, French President uh, Macron uh, indicated that uh, he was supporting the uh, Rwandan uh, foreign minister uh, candidacy that um, France, you know, has traditionally sort of given, given the nod, uh, and Macron did so with uh, the support of, uh, uh, obviously, the tacit support of uh, many uh, African countries who, uh, by far and away, uh, form uh, uh, the largest voting bloc in La Francophonie. Uh, the game was over. And, uh, and I think, uh, uh, you know, at that point, uh, 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 the uh, Secretary General should have seen uh, that the writing was, uh, was, was on the wall. Um, you know, this has become a very public spat. Um, uh, you know, her spokesperson is saying publicly, uh, you know, uh, she doesn't have the support uh, of her own country, she doesn't have the support of the province of Quebec, which also has a seat mm -hmm. uh, in La Francophonie. And, and so, you know, it's, uh, I think, you know, I think there's a sense, a general sense of bewilderment as to uh, why uh, she wants to uh, prolong the agony here. What do you think did in her candidacy? Was it just, I mean, you mentioned, obviously, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron came out in favor of mm -hmm. the Rwandan foreign minister, Louise uh, Mashikiwa Wabu. Um, it, was mm -hmm. it just that he preferred her, or was it something she did that sort of sabotaged her candidacy? Well, I think, I think there's, uh, uh, there, there are two factors. One is, uh, um, you know, there were reports of, uh, you know, lavish spending on uh, renovations uh, for the uh, uh, resident, uh, of the sec resident of the Secretary General in Paris. Uh, 
$500,000 reportedly, the, the $20,000 piano. Uh, you know, none of that looks good, uh, obviously. Uh, but I think there, there's bigger geopolitics at play. Um, Macron is trying to, uh, in many ways, you know, reestablish France as uh, the center of la francophonie, uh, you know, strengthening relations uh, with African countries that clearly want one of their own uh, in, in that position. So I think uh, it's, it's sort of a confluence of factors. Uh, and at the same time, when it comes to Canada, uh, Martin, you know, we're running for a seat uh, in the Security Council. We don't want to uh, uh, antagonize or irritate uh, uh, our uh, African uh, friends. Uh, we want to go with the consensus. This is very much an organization where you, uh, it's, a, it's largely a cultural uh, organization in terms of the work that it does. And, and it's, you, you, you go along to get along. And, and you know, this is uh, proving to be quite embarrassing, obviously, uh, uh, for, uh, for the French, uh, for, for ourselves. Uh, and um, if it does go to a debate, I mean, what gets said in that debate is, is probably going to leak out of the room, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to know what gets said. And, and you, that's the last thing that you want. So um, you alluded to it. I mean, I was speaking with someone yesterday, and they, they said when you look at La Francophonie, the two big actors, the two big financial backers mm -hmm. of La Francophonie are France mm -hmm. and Canada. Some said that Canada could mm -hmm. have mounted a battle for Michel Jean, but you alluded to it. Some said that Prime Minister Trudeau probably would rather use his political capital mm -hmm. among the Francophone countries lobbying for that seat on the uh, Security Council. Well, I think that's definitely uh, what's, at, what's at play here. But I think e even though you know, we do contribute some you know, 40 million annually uh, to uh, support the organization, um, you know, which is substantial uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, its work, its program of work. Um, you know, the organization, uh, as you may recall, only came into existence when uh, Canada uh, agreed to join La Francophonie under Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and Francois Mitterrand of France. Um, so, you know, we, we, ha we are seen as major players. But we also have to be realistic. We don't have the political leverage, uh, uh, the geopolitical clout uh, that comes from being a, a former uh, colonial power in the region. Um, uh, you know, France brings Europe as a major donor uh, to, uh, to Africa. Um, uh, and I think, you know, realistically, if we were to mount a fight uh, on behalf of Michel Jean, uh, I think you know we read the tea leaves uh, correctly. We'd lose, and and that wouldn't that wouldn't help us, and it certainly wouldn't help our our candidacy, our bid for the Security Council, and and we'd we'd really run the risk of uh, you know irritating uh, uh, some of those uh, you know important francophone votes uh, in the region. Well, Fen Hampson, thank you very much for taking the time, and it looks as if this uh, francophone summit may be the one that's remembered for this as opposed to anything else that's on the agenda. Thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure, Martin.